price? I think it was Tree Fitty. No, when it was released in the U.S. No, you're right. It was Tree. Okay, I mean, still the Tree Tree bucks, Fitty though. is uh, at, at Tree Fitty. I'm thinking is for the OLED. It's the version. OLED, yeah, yeah. So yes, it went up in in, in eight seven years, eight years. It went up a hundred dollars next year. So a hundred yeah. bucks. See, that is reasonable. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, look, it's a pro. Let's add on three hundred more dollars. You get you and can you get, don't even get all of it. Hello and welcome to level one hundred and seventeen of your thoughts and players podcast. The Gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy here with my compadre, David. What up? How's it going? How's your evening going? Going all right. It's uh, a little hot in here. Yeah. It's zapping all right. How about you? Doing all right. You know, doing all right. As, as I've said before, making my way downtown, walking fast, faces passing up homebound. Uh, it's feeling just, it's feeling just feeling, you know, feeling that way. Ladies well, and I gentlemen, that song. it's a Sorry. great song. It's, it's so, so, so good. Here's the thing: I will, I will not seek that song out. But when I, but, but when it seeks me, you're darn right that I'm gonna sing back to it. That's right. That's 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 right. Hundred uh, percent. Ladies and gentlemen, chickens, ducks, and hens, and Vanessa Carlson, we welcome you women to this level of the pod, level 117. We're gonna talk about. A, we got a couple of good topics here. Some nice juicy rumors, and of course, I think a very interesting topic we can talk about some things. But of course, we're going to start this off like we start every single level off. We're going to talk about what we've been playing. That's right. That's right. I think that I had revealed in the last level that I had um, ended my foray into Rome. I ended my expeditions into Rome that will no longer occupy my Let's Plays or my, or what we're playing area, you know what I'm saying? Um, I am not on to, to different and newer games. Well, actually, arguably new to me, not new in regards to the chronological release. Um, I can offer up what I'm what I'm playing first. Yeah, I'm interested. It's mostly what, mostly been one there? game. So I mentioned before that I was going to try to get back into and play a game called Mafia Three. Um, I'm a big fan of the Mafia series. Okay, love did my. Did I succeed in getting into it? Yeah, I did. Uh -huh, I did. Oh yeah. I'm a big fan of the, uh, probably my favorite one is probably the first Mafia. Actually, you know what? It might be the second one. Uh, but I love I love the number one and number two, and uh, I've had number three for a while. Um, just like I mentioned before, kind of hey, it's almost like The Godfather too. Just play that instead and play this and. I for one, it's it's not it's mechanically very similar, but it's also wildly not like Godfather Two. All right, um, culturally it's exponentially different. You play, uh, man, I'm forgetting his name at, at the at the moment. No, you play Lincoln Clay. That's his name. Who is a uh, biracial character set in the New Bordeaux, which is basically their version of uh, of New Orleans, Louisiana, in the late 1960s. You have to deal with the oh, cultural wow. aspects of racism and war and anti-war and all the different things that were happening during that time. And, oh, yeah, while you're having to deal with all of that and having to deal with the racism of the cops, you're also trying to kill off the mob. OK, that's everything going on right now. It is nothing like Godfather 2 in that respect. OK, it is mechanically like lot. yeah, it is mechanically like Godfather 2 where you got to go to a racket. You got to kill the racket boss, take the racket over. Earn that, earn that money. You know what I'm saying? That's mechanically the same, but everything else is really different. Um, so I've been playing it. It has some weird bugs in it still, which is weird. Like like interesting bugs um, for a game that that's, it's that age. And also I mentioned before that when I installed it, it installed the definitive edition on my console, even though I just have a regular version of it. You would think this year, these many years on, the definitive edition, they would have ironed out pretty much a lot, if not most of the bugs or all the bugs. It's right. still buggy in a lot of places. Um, but yeah, I've I've mostly been playing that. That's what I've been focusing on. And in, in fact, I've been focusing on it so much that I've lost my momentum in other games. I do eventually want to hop back into um, Big Ambitions, where I was Alex Jong and I had my flower shop and I opened up my liquor right. store. 
I got to get back into that. I, that's had a I had an itch for it, but I just I just want to focus on this game right now because I'm kind of really into it. Um, but yeah, I've really been enjoying that. It? It's supposed to be about around a thirty so hour game, and, and another one. Yeah, but I think I may be five six ish hours into it and i'm still it's kind of the same thing where it's like i'm not phased at all i get there's a little bit there's a little bit of points of fatigue or whatever but overall i'm so well into the game so i do believe this will be another game i end up beating which would be nice to have another game that i beat on my consoles um you know right. on my playstation on the earn those trophies and stuff like that but yeah really enjoying what there is so far and i haven't i also haven't unlocked all the mechanics of the game yet so there's also other abilities and other things in the game that I'll be able to do. But I enjoy the Got shooting. It. The driving is is okay. It's pretty nice. Um, the voice acting and the cutscenes are world class. Um, and so it it's, does a really good job of getting you into the story because of that. The story, the story in this game, and all the Mafia games have amazing stories, They've kept the caliber of storytelling with this third one. It's like incredible. Um, and then this part of the reason I'm playing Mafia 3 is because I had read a report not too long ago that Hangar 13, which developed Mafia 3, is in development on the Mafia 4. So I am looking forward to that. I don't know if it will be a 30 hour open game like this. The first game was very much linear, may, way more linear. It's talking about maybe a 16 our game the second one they all have open world components but how the stories and missions work it was very linear the second one was a little less linear but still very much more linear than this one that you're maybe talking maybe 20 25 30 hours with that one maybe this one is probably by far the longest one i don't know how long the next one will be my hope is that they learn from the poor reception they had with the third one and the good reception of the previous two and they streamline the the story process and just right just, just keep the momentum and everything going. You don't want to lose the momentum. So, uh, right. but that's actually the only game I've really been playing. I haven't touched. I haven't touched college football. Wow. Like I said, I haven't touched big ambitions, though I probably plan to. Um, and it's crazy because as we record this, it's the same day that Frostpunk Two drops. So, and ideally, ideally, I would be playing Frostpunk Two. I'm not going to. I'm going to be playing Mafia Three because I just want to finish this out. Um, but and then we'll see if I even. You're just going to wait until you finish it. Well, fortunately, before I get rid of my Game Pass, I can play that game on Game Pass. So I don't have to make the decision of if I'm going to buy it or not with my money. I'm going to download right. it uh, eventually and play it, probably after I've put some more time into Big Ambitions. Um, you know, and possibly scratch the itch of a couple of other games. I almost messed up and bought another game, David, but Ooh. I didn't. Even though, here's the thing. I got a slot because I beat one. I got an opening. I got one slot open. <laughs> But I said, you know what? I'm going to save it for something else. I'm not going to do it just yet. Let me right. beat a couple of these bad boys and open up a couple slots. Imagine I beat two, three, four, five games in the backlog. Open it up. It's crazy. Yeah, but uh, open that pit. Exactly. But that's that's what I've been playing. How about you? All right. Um. Well, I completed of what's there on the Arrow GPX. Okay. So we're waiting for the multiplayer, and, and there's still two or three cups for the game okay. to be put in. Okay. So there's, there's only three right now, and I completed those. I can go back and do, like, standard and expert or whatever. I only did mm -hmm. the easiest levels. So I can definitely go back and replay it. Um, Of course, TFT, Apex, and the finals. I'm at 25 hours with the finals. Ah. Uh, so it's in there. It's, it's I think it's stuck. I think, I, yeah, that's, it fun. seems like it. Yeah. They got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's got me. It's it's very fun. Yeah. Um, I started another game. Okay. And I was uh, I was flying a kite, you know, so I got scared and I turned it off. And I'm only 20 minutes in, but it's a horror game, and it's okay. about this uh, estate on this island or whatever, and you're a person that is going to see your fiance or wife, or I'm not too sure yet, mm -hmm. but things ha went haywire and she's like stuck in the attic or something. And you have to like find your way up there. But the people that were in the huge hotel thing 
aren't people anymore or whatever. So you just like hear these random footsteps and random doors and me, I, you know, flying a kite. I was like, I cannot do this right now. I was so <laughs> scared for my life. So I turned it off, but I plan on going back into it. It okay. seems pretty good so far. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, that's, that's what I've been playing. So is this, this is more like an indie horror game? Yes. Okay. Okay. I got, cool. I got it for like three bucks. Oh, nice. On July 4th, it was a sale. There you go. Nice. Okay. Okay. We have to, you'll have to let us know how that goes. Yeah. Is it, I, is it, is it one of those kind of like games that I think of like, like, what was it? Like the Edith Finch game and like, well, they're kind of I like, never played that one. It's like a mystery. Like you have to find the clues and yeah. 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 I'd those typically. Then. Those kind of aim to be more like the four to six hour type games. Does it seem like it's kind of like a shorter game like that? I I could not tell you. Yeah. Is it like first person? Yeah. First yeah. person. You're just running around and yeah. like you can hear your heartbeat and stuff. And when you're not oh. walking for a while, your heartbeat kind of like goes away or it's really, it's like very low. So these monsters or whatever, I haven't ran into anything yet, are probably going to be very, very good hearing i feel mm. like is what the difficulty is going to be yeah okay okay well wishing you wishing you a lot of luck there hopefully it doesn't appreciate it hopefully it's not too scary like i said i i can't i don't i don't do if it's too scary i don't i'm out of there <laughs> i feel you i haven't been yeah. scared in a while yeah so i feel like i i, I can do this i can do this the idea that you were playing it for 20 minutes and then you heard some stuff and you were like, nope. Yeah, I also, um, you know, I need to do it, like, now. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, or if you have time, like, just right early in the morning, sun is all the way, you just open the windows completely, right, and just douse the room in light, and you're like, ah, <laughs> nothing can get to me now. Right. Yeah, yeah. All righty, well, it's time to move on to our topics. And the first topic we're going to talk about is uh, mention some rumors, some leaks. So spilling the tea, huh? Spilling the tea, or the Nintendo. Oh man, I messed that up. The Nintendo. Nintendo. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, we all know that the Switch Two is on the is on the horizon. It's right? somewhere. It's somewhere. We thought that it, we it may have been revealed and that a. Uh, Release may have been out by now. We were wrong. That's not the case. But we know it's we know it's out there. So um, recently, there was a supposed, an alleged leak of the prototype, and it included kind of like uh, some of the motherboard and you know screen size, different things like that. Um, now, some things haven't been leaked, like the CPU. Don't know what the CPU is going to be. We're assuming it seems like all the console. Makers have kind of been teaming up and going with AMD as of lately. Even the PS5 Pro is running a AMD Zen 2, I believe. Uh, so they've mostly been running with AMD. It seems like Intel has kind of lost that. It seems like Intel has kind of lost a lot, to be honest with you. Um, Intel Intel chips aren't Macs anymore. They aren't pit in consoles or anything. So, um, but there were some other things that were leaked about it. So reading through. One of the um, one of the I guess rumors is that this is alleged to have an eight inch display. Now I'm not sure the size. I can't remember the size of the Nintendo Switch's display. If I think about the it's size, bigger. Yeah, I'm gonna. So if I'm what I'm actually interested in is what is the size of the Steam Deck. So the Steam this because the Steam Deck screen is bigger than the Switch thing or the Switch right. bigger than the Switch screen. So the Steam Deck has a 7.4 inch display, 1200 by 800. It's uh, the lower the cheaper ones are LCD. They're kind of getting rid of that version and they're just going to have the old the OLED uh, panels for from going forward. Right. So by rumors, the Nintendo the Switch Two is supposed to have about half an inch larger display than the Steam Deck. Okay, I can get with that because I enjoy one of the things I enjoy with the Steam Deck the display was so big. It's still mobile. It's not super duper small, but it was it was great for the display. Right. Um. So 
they mentioned the the RAM. It's going to be running DDR5. Uh, it said that for the okay. for the um, for the graphics card, it could be using an NVIDIA chip, an NVIDIA Tegra, uh, which runs about a little bit over fifteen hundred CUDA cores. I don't know if anyone really knows what that is, but that's basically the uh, graphic processing cores or units that are within or held within this graphics card. Um, and it's uh, said to be able to have a, uh, let's see here. It's said to have about 12 gigs of RAM. Again, it's running DDR5 RAM. And it's reported to feature a 256 gigabyte hard drive. So um, it's not 100%. I'm, I'm assuming that like the Switch Now and like the Steam Deck, that that will be expandable with uh, micro SD. Right. Um, you, you don't really need to put the games on there like PlayStation and Xbox, right? <laughs> right. Well, that's what was, the other thing I was going to say. Um, and I have like another rumored parts list here. But that's the other thing I was going to say. Switch games typically are way smaller. So, you know, and, and, and also if I'm remembering right, I don't, I can't remember 100%, but the idea that they're running them off the cartridges still. I right. think kind of plays into the the idea that you're you're pulling some of that information off the cartridge as you play it, in addition to what you have installed on the storage or on your hard drive. So it kind of helps with that. Yeah. Um. Let's see here. It's going to have dual cooling fans in it. Uh. It's going to have a display port to HDMI. It's supposed to support HDMI 2.1, which I believe is how you can get like. I think that's believe how you can get like 4K 60. I think is you need an HDMI 2.1. Okay. okay. It has a network chip, um, you know, speakers, stuff like that. Uh, the images they show are mostly of the console, just the console itself. It said that the the Joy Cons for this next version are going to be magnetized, so they'll be able to, bloop, magnetize right into the actual screen display unit itself. Um, that's a lot better. Yes, very much so. And um, yeah, I, I'm assuming that I, I'd like to see if there was more information about the actual. I don't know if you would call it basically the dock, right? Um, because that yes. was that was the thing. A lot of people, and like you were saying, like before we started recording, a lot of people enjoy it because of the mobility of it, and this will have some mobility. Again, the screen's going to be a little bit bigger, so. You know, have a little less mobility, but still have a lot of mobility. Right. But you think about the dock. The dock for the Nintendo Switch is supposed to basically take it from that mobile experience to more of like a home console experience. For the, except for the fact that it yes. plugs, it plugs into your TV, and you can sit down and play from your TV. I always felt like I was playing a mobile device on my TV, in regards to power and performance. So I oh, think for the, sure. the for hope, sure. yeah, the hope with this is that it bridges that experience a bit more. That when you're playing it on mobile, you have an awesome mobile experience, but then when you're playing it on console, you feel like you're having a console experience. And for this to knock it out the park for me, I don't need, I wouldn't need it to have a Series X experience or a PS5 experience. If it could give me a PS4 equivalent experience with having all the mobility and different stuff like that. I think it'd be a knockout of the park. I think it'd be an yeah, absolute I, home run. I think it needs to at this point because one, what what's going to be the difference between Switch and Switch Two? You know, it, it mm -hmm. has to be upgraded a graphics. It has to be a better processor. You know, it, ha it has to at least start showing like, hey, look, we we can compete with Sony and Microsoft. We just don't want to because it's not a priority. Yes. But yes. If they don't upgrade anything, what is the point of making a Switch 2? And also, it's weird they're making a Switch 2. They've never named any console after a previous console besides Nintendo and Super Nintendo. But that was like the 80s and 90s. So Right. Right. Well, I guess calling it Super Switch would be it just sounds weird. Um, right. Or like, uh, what was it? Yeah, Wii, Wii U, Nintendo U. That sounds like. That sounds like a really bad school you go to to learn how to create Nintendo games. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if 
I can't even remember if they confirmed it that it's actually called the, the Switch Wii U, 2. Though, to be honest. It does yeah. kind of defeat my uh, argument there. Well, but I mean, you you were saying that no they've bought that really. Yeah, but you were saying that they haven't. They've never named the console just a two. Like they've never done I mean, a sequential. Yes, thing. if if you're yeah. if we're if we're playing, and Wii U for well for one, if you if we just want to talk about one of the catastrophes of the Wii U, people thought the Wii U were was an extension of the Wii. That's how bad they, they didn't. People didn't realize it was a separate console. Because they're like, I have a Wii U, or I, or I have a Wii. Well, here's a Wii U. And they're like, okay, so what is, is that like an extra, is that like a, is it like another handheld controller for it? Like, what, like, what is that? And they're like, oh, no, it's a completely different console that has more power and stuff to it. They're like, I don't, is that like a battery charger? Like, people didn't know what it was. So I do think they'll maybe go the more very boring, but hey, PlayStation's done it. And their crap is together. Xbox is off doing their own. They're doing the same crap. They don't know what the heck they're doing. Yeah, right. They're on their own level. So I can understand Nintendo looking at it and just saying, "Let's just call it the, the Switch 2 and just get the f out the way." Like I, I understand, I understand that being part of the idea of it, right? Yeah. Um. But yeah, hundred percent, I agree with everything you're saying. It needs you need to see that bump up in in GPU and CPU power. You need to see these games. I mean, Nintendo again has some of the best first party developers in the world. They get their games to look awesome and run awesome on these at the onset underpowered. Con- this game was this game console was underpowered when it came out, and it was and it came out in 2017, and it was underpowered. It, it wasn't underpowered compared to the PS5 and the Series X or the Series S. It was underpowered compared to the Xbox One and the PS4, okay? Right. It came out <laughs> underpowered against its already existing competition. And Nintendo said, we don't care. You can walk around with it, and you can play NBA 2K on it. And people bought it, and they loved it. And they also said, we've got Zelda. Watch this. We're going to create one of the best RPGs in the past decade and put it on this as a freaking launch title. And they did it, right? So, they did. I mean, Very what can I say? Uh, but yeah, I think they, they definitely need to improve all these things. What the fact that the chips are putting in there for video signal conversion supports HDMI 2.1, that's a little bit hopeful for me. Um, I feel like it may be able to, we might, we might be able to get, I mean, when I say something like, oh my God, it might be, it might be able to run 1080p at 60 frames per second. When I say that, I think Oh, that sounds absurd. Of course it should. Anything should. But then I think back to who we're talking about and what they do. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> so I remember. I mean, also, like part of me part of me wants to say if this thing could put out if it can put out uh two K sixty P or four K thirty, that would be pretty insane. Yeah. And I, I just thought of like a lot of you know third party games and stuff, people just make fun of it that it's on the switch because of how God awful they are experience wise. Mm -hmm. Like obviously if you have overwatch on the switch and that's the only way you could play it, obviously you're still able to play it, but whatever, but like nobody wants to just play it on the switch because, because it's just awful experience, Mm -hmm. bunch of leg and the graphics are worse Mm -hmm. and it's just, it's not cool. You know? So if they bump this up, to where if they're getting these third party titles that yes. they actually run decent. Yes. I think what it could benefit from is what a lot of people and what personally I, I've said that the PlayStation 5 runs from or benefits from is that the PlayStation 5 runs PlayStation 5 games really good, but it runs PlayStation 4 games spectacularly. So if it's an idea that the Nintendo Switch or the Switch 2 could actually run Switch games, and that includes third-party games, if it could run those way better, then they've got a hit. Because right. I definitely would be super cool with being able to play The Witcher 3 at, like, 1080p 60 mobily. Mm-hmm. That'd be awesome, right? Right now, if you, throw, if you load that up on your Nintendo Switch... That thing's going to chug. You're going to get sub 30, maybe even sub 25 frames per second. You're looking oh, yeah. at 720p. You're going to have a bunch of different things it's got to figure out. But if you can upscale that and run that stuff smoothly, then that's where it's going to benefit. Every Nintendo Switch game that comes out, or that has came out, if you're able to put it on the Switch 2 and that improves the performance, then you basically have your PS5 thing that's happening. It's like, oh, I can play my Switch game. You know what I'm saying? I can play Breath of the Wild at 10 80p 60 frames or i can play it at 
2.5K or 3K at, you know, whatever, 75 frames per second or whatever, then it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different ball game. It's like, oh, yeah, I'm buying new Switch games. And I'm buying old Switch games and because I can play all those and they'll be awesome. I think they get, that's a that's another another, you know, kind of benefit they would have with, with juicing this thing up performance wise. Exactly. I, I feel like they can do even better than what they want to do, which mm-hmm. is usually kind of absurd to begin with. And yeah, I, I think it would be a great thing. You know, people would wouldn't mind playing the third party games on it and might actually prefer it because of the portability. Right, right. So to go along with all these other things that are specs, the other rumor is that there's also two models that are going to be released. A more premium model and a more kind of basic model. So they're kind of doing the same thing that everyone's doing, right? Yeah, um, I, I don't, that. I don't know if that basic model is going to be an all digital version of it, right? Or if it's just you know less less premium exterior stylings or different things like that. But it's supposed to launch with two. Now the and so all you keep all that in mind. We talked about the specs, all that stuff. We're talking about the fact that it's launching with two versions. My question to you is. Once I throw out the, the the suggested rumored price, is if you think you'd bite or not. Now the now the, the suggested rumored price for the Nintendo Switch Two. Oh, honey. Four hundred. Oh, honey. Not too bad. That I mean, that's that's still in the range to be like, you know what? That's it, it, it's a hit that will be worth it. Now, remember, first Nintendo Switch came out. At what? I think it was it was three hundred, right? Tr- it was tree fifty. Okay, see, so that's not even much more. Fifty bucks? Yeah. At least, eight at least eight I years th- later. At least I think it was. Let me double check. Uh, Switch release price. I think it was tree fifty. No, when it was released in the U.S. No, you're right. It was tree. Okay, I mean, still the tree tree fifty is uh at, at tree fifty. I'm thinking is for the OLED. It's the version. OLED, yeah, yeah. So yes, it went up in in eight seven years, eight years. It went up a hundred dollars next year. So hundred yeah. bucks. See, that is reasonable. Yeah, yeah. The, oh, look, it's a pro. Let's add on three hundred more dollars. You get you and can you get, don't even get all of it. You can get up to sixty five percent more con- performance through increased graphical cores and voodoo, and there and and all you need to do. Is pay another two hundred to three hundred more dollars. Um, yes, and by the way, it sounds like that's four hundred for the system and the dock. Okay, so and uh, the dock and the dock. You don't Man, have to buy a stand or anything separately. Business. Thing they're right re- there. they're really a matter of fact. It's too generous. I would say it's too generous. You know. Um, but yes, it's not very Nintendo. Generous. I know, right? So yeah, keeping all that in mind. Keeping all that, keeping all that in mind, I mean, Sony. By the way, you could also just like put little nubs into the system, like Xbox did. But anyway, uh, keeping that in mind, I say that you know what. And whereas before, as I didn't really didn't have that much attention to the Nintendo Switch Two, I got a little bit. It's got my eye and my ear a little bit more. It's definitely Based intriguing. Of, it's intriguing. That's a perfect word. It is intriguing for sure. I'm gonna keep my own. I keep my eye on it a little bit more. I'm gonna listen up for a little bit more because, like you said, in eight years, only a hundred dollars more, and it's not like you're getting the same thing. You're getting more, as you should be. You're getting, you know, a better CPU, better GPU, right? Right. You're getting an. Sounds like an NVIDIA chip, and not an AMD chip. So they're going a little bit different. Everyone else is giving you AMD chips, um, which means that they. I don't. I don't know if that chip. It's a Tegra. I don't know if the Tegra chips have any kind of like ray tracing or any component of that to it, but that could be something to look into. I don't know if it leverages any kind of machine learning or DLSS from Nintendo or, or NVIDIA, because that could also be a pop- possible game changer if you're able to, yeah, if they're able sure. to like kind of take advantage of that. That'd um, be kind of crazy though to go from like not caring to just be like, hey, look, we can compete and do it. That's a big up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if even mobily to go from a to go from a console that can that does not play a game at 60 frames at 1080p nope. to possibly even being able to do like a 4k 30. That is a massive jump. That is just completely absurd. Now, again, I don't think, I don't think this will play anything 4k natively because I don't think Nintendo needs to think about that. 
Um, they show that they can release a game where everything else is going 4K. They can release a console that doesn't even do 1080p and still crush it. Uh, so I don't think they're really concerned that much about that. But I do think they're concerned about making this a little bit more competitive as far as power. In the interim of the Nintendo Switch coming out, power and, and processing power has become more of a focus. That's, I mean, you know, in the interim of the Switch coming out, PC gaming has completely become this huge monster of, of a culture that people are into, right? And you have these consoles that are coming out with the PS5 Pro that are claiming 8K. There ain't a single 8K thing out there, but they're saying 8K. And talking about fidelity and all that stuff, I don't think Nintendo can put out anything where they're still they're still running games at 900p. Uh, that you can't do that, but you can at least make it more competitive. And on a small eight-inch screen, 1080p looks really good. And yeah, 1080p yeah. <laughs> running at 60 looks incredible. And if they have a dock that has additional processing power in it, and it can maintain that 1080p 60 on the on the screen, I feel like they don't really have anything to worry about. No, really. If you can, if they can just hit 1080p, 60 frames consistently, mobile and count and, and docked, I think they win. Um, and I don't really think that's asking a lot from a technical standpoint, but I do think they win. Um, yeah, there's there's so much yeah. technology nowadays. You know, it it seems like it should be the bare minimum at this point. Yes. Like it was all the rage when it came out, sure, and it was mm -hmm. the most expensive, and everyone couldn't afford it. But nowadays, especially businesses this huge, yeah, shouldn't really be that much of an issue, and especially with how big they are and how well known they are. They probably get like good wholesale prices or something. Yes, better than anything we could afford or I, get. I anticipate. Now I may I may sound like an idiot now. But I anticipate that if Nintendo plays their cards right with this one, the Switch 2 may be the best-selling Nintendo console ever sold. It may be. I think everyone who's bought a Switch would be willing to buy another Switch, a Switch 2. Right. And, again, we talked about the suggested price. If they're coming out at 4 I would even say if they come out at, like, 429 or 449 you compare that to the competition that's out there right now. Yeah, my Series X can play a lot of cool things. It ain't got no games. Um, yeah, Sony's over here trying to sell $700 consoles. It's over here trying to sell $700 mid-life upgrades. Um, so I think if they can keep that, especially if they come in at 400 or, I mean, got sub-4, and they're able to deliver, like I said, consistently on those ends, they're going to crush it. They're just going to yeah. absolutely crush it. And I, they're going to crush it anyway. Um, Xbox is Xbox is firmly in third place for a reason. Yeah. Um, think about that. And the in the in the time that Nintendo has put out just one console, Xbox has put out two, and they're still in third place. It's incredible. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I I think that I think they can really crush it with this. I'm I'm yeah. looking forward to it. It's definitely got and my attention now. I looked it up. The most sold Nintendo console is the DS with 154. And apparently yes. the Switch is in third place with 132 million. Yes. So it's not too far off. So I see it being very viable because if the Switch 2 is like this monster of a console from Nintendo of all people, yeah. not only are you getting the 132 that bought the Switch, you're also easily going to get another 30, 40 million to beat that 154. Yes. Yeah. I mean, yeah, though, Nintendo will get an influx of people who are buying, replacing their original Switches with Switch 2s. They'll get an influx of people buying this first Switch for the first time, whether it be, uh, you know, first purchase or secondhand. They'll get more people into their ecosystem. I think they're going right. to crush it. Um, yes, the DS was insane. And like you said, the Switch is in third place. Um, yes. So everything's everything's within everything's within reach. They've got a shot. They got a they real do. shot. They have a great here's, shot right now. The only thing that can hold them up is like again, like I said, with the Switch, they incidentally released it with one of the greatest RPGs ever made at that time. They're gonna have to have some bangers with it. Um, Breath of the Wild. I don't know if people know this. Breath of the Wild sold the Switch, not Mario Odyssey. You would think that a Mario game would be the thing that sold the that sold the system, but it didn't. So I think if they can come out. They've already released their Zelda, right? Right. I mean, so, yeah, just take one of their IPs. Take one of their and IPs. Just put a lot of work and time into it, like it they did with Breath of the Wild. It cannot be Star Fox. 
and it cannot be Splatoon. Okay, yeah. it's got to be something else. You got to do a Mario, right? You've got to do a. Here's what you know. What would what would what would sell it? What do you think? I don't because, like you said, they just they just put out another Link one. Yes. And no, you can't really do a, a side off like the the Zelda one that they're releasing that you actually play a Zelda. Mm-hmm. That's not going to sell it. Um, Mario, it could. You know, it's done it before. What was Mario 64 that came out with the Nintendo 64? I think so, yeah. And that, I mean, that did very well. Um, maybe Metroid, but there's not a huge fan base for that. Right. But if they really like ramp it up, it could that could do well. it. So, th- so that's one of that's one of the two I'm thinking. So for one, another thing that would be cool is if these Joy Cons, if they kind of rip off, just rip off. If you can kind of rip off uh, what Sony did with their their controllers. By making them, I don't want to, the tactile isn't the right word, but you know, like the the controllers are like really, the dual sense are like really responsive and they're like, you know, when you're trying to, you run out of, run out of ammunition in your gun, like you can't really push the trigger all the way dial, down and different stuff like that. If they can right. add that component, um, if they can add that component to it, that would be awesome. But the two games you launch with it, Metroid, Metroid Prime 4. So the next big Metroid, their first person. I yeah. want you with that and or because we didn't get this on the switch. We got a deluxe version of it on the switch. You give us Mario Kart nine. Ooh, you give us one or both yeah. of those. If you give, here's the thing. If, 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 if they, if they launch both of those, Microsoft should just shut down. It should just liquidate. <laughs> you just, you never going to win. You're just not going to win. But if they give us one or both of those, I think they crush. I think they crush. Yeah, I, they give yeah, us one or both of point. those. They give us a remastered uh, version of Breath of the Wild with better textures and higher frame rates. It's <laughs> it's a wrap. As crappy as it is, that would do it. Yes, it's <coughs> yeah, it, it's it's a wrap. It's a wrap. But um, yeah, I was just kind of getting trying to kind of gauge your interest. You think you think that you might have some interest in it? That you know, I, I, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, me too, me too. I'm hoping oh, Nintendo does. I'm hoping Nintendo crushes it. I'm hoping they do good. Yeah, it's kind of strange. I know. Open for them. I know. People have been wanting Microsoft to do a mobile console. They haven't done one because they want see, you to. Why not? They 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 well, didn't make consoles. Well, they're, they're they were trying to cash in on on cloud gaming, right? Project Cloud X. Game or yeah. X Cloud game every game everywhere. That's that was our whole thing. Eventually, we can just sell you access to a Game Pass or to the game to the Xbox platform, and you can just play your game. You can play games, stream them on whatever. That's not going to happen. But no. that was their that was their plan. Um. But anyway, yeah, that's it for my topic. Uh, okay, I was about to ask. Yeah. Get anything else? Okay, so my topic is about replayability Mm -hmm. for video games now there's some games we play once maybe twice never touch them again there's some games that are you know endless like be an example you know like apex there's Mm -hmm. no story or anything and somehow people can put three thousand hours into them but what is it that makes people put that three thousand hours into it or makes them play the same story game over and over especially when it's a pretty linear game where there's no changes to the story like Baldur's Gate 3 for example Mm -hmm. you know like what what brings you back to that table yeah yeah it's so yeah it's, it's it's interesting so like one of the games I was talking about, like I mentioned before, I, I was playing was Expeditions Rome, right? Mm-hmm. I could see someone going back games that had that alter endings or alter certain things based upon decisions. I can see people going back and playing those a lot because you know, yeah, in my that totally in, makes sense too. Yeah, and, different and, everything. Yeah, like like in my playthrough, I kill Cleopatra and Ptolemy. I can do a playthrough where I don't kill either of them, or I just kill one of them, right? And my different things shake out. So I understand that, but like, so for instance, I talked about how I recently went back and played and beat Fable 2 for like the seventh or eighth time. Uh, yeah, yeah, you did. 
So what has brought me back to that game? Um, the thing, I think it's kind of like movies and it's kind of like TV, right? Where there's like just... The, you first played this game and the way that the game plays and feels and how the characters and the story is told, it's just something that really... This, you, it just really connects with you. And then you kind of go back and just visit those games again to kind of get that... That's like that familiarity, right? Like you just, it's kind of like yeah, returning, like you sure. have your, your favorite chair, right? You just keep going back to it because the chair just fits you and holds you a certain way, right? And I think it's kind of like the same with games with Fable. Like with Fable, Fable is a very easy game. It's not hard at all. So it allows me to turn my brain off. And I always have a certain, certain, sometimes games that also have certain functions. I have certain games I go and play that allow me to do certain things. When I want to turn my brain off, I go back and play easy games, but I've talked about this before. I'm not someone that, okay, I want to go play an easy game, turn my brain off. I'm not going to subject myself to freaking Madden or some BS like that. <laughs> so I'm going to go play fable, right? Like, like that's the thing where I can kind of turn my brain off. I know what's going to happen. I know the story beats. There's different things you can explore in the game every single time. Some things you kind of save yourself. Like, you know what? This is a little snack. I'm going to save myself for later. When I play fable to the 12th time, I'm going to go check out this side quest. I know it's over here, but I'm going to do it this time, right? Right. Um, yeah, with that game in particular, though, I think it is just the easiness and, you know, just kind of in uh, the humor of it, right? It's very British humor. Um, yeah, I'm thinking that's a, one of, a couple of the reasons why that game in particular, I've gone back and played it so many times. And like you said, it's not like a thing of, like Apex is meant to be played over and over and over, or like you know, um, other games they have updates, games as a service, right? Where the game continues to evolve and grow. Fable Two is going to be is is Fable Two since it came out. It's not going to change. Why go back and keep playing it? I think it's I think it's some of those things of why I would go back and play a game like Fable Two over and over. It's just it's just it's just the feel of it. It's the world. You're a hero and. You can do your own path and you can do whatever you want. There's consequences, but there's also not consequences because you can kind of kill people. Who cares? And all the other stuff, you know? <laughs> yeah. 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 You bring up some good points. Like, uh, example for like, for me, I played The Last of Us like 30 plus times. Mm -hmm. And it's just the story is was so captivating for me. Mm -hmm. And not only just watching and redoing the story over and over, it was about all like the upgrading my weapons and stuff like mm -hmm. on, on normal mode i have it's been a couple years since i've played it but like i have almost all my weapons upgraded and i can go back and do it again and maybe get them upgraded all the way but then there's also i played on grounded so you didn't have like the seeing through walls and stuff and very limited ammo and it made the game a lot harder same game mm -hmm. but just way more difficult and like Resident Evil 4, the original, that's the most played Resident Evil game I have. Yeah. I, 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 that was the first game, only game, like I ever tried to speed run, and I was only like 12 or whatever. And the quickest I did it was like five and a half hours. But yeah. I just, I just loved it. And then unlocking the, the hand canning from hand cannon from beating all like, uh, the mercenary levels or whatever it was called in that one. Mm -hmm. And just going through that, one-shotting everything, that was fun. But it was just, again, the same story over and over. There's nothing that switches in that one. Yeah. You know? But it's just, yeah, like you say, it's the, the gameplay, uh, the story, or, you know, even Apex, for example, has no ending. It's just, you know, some people put 20 hours into it. Like, okay, yeah, I'm over this. And there's people even with more hours than me. You know, there's yeah. people with, like, five, six, seven thousand 7,000 hours maybe because you know they have more of a problem than i do or they do it for like a living but like the gameplay is really good i like the movement in it you know just the the characters that they release so even it's not even the same game that it was you know that's what right. it, about i guess live action games you know they are the same but they're not they keep releasing different things and putting new things and i think that's what keeps me captivated for like apex and stuff like that but yeah mm -hmm. i i think it is gonna vary person to person of course and like game to game because like resident evil 
two, the remake, and three. Like I played them and beat them, but I never touched them again. Yeah. Resident Evil eight and seven, same thing. I played them, loved them, never touched them again. Yeah. But Resident Evil four, the original, The Last of Us, I I kind of want to go back and play them again. Oh yeah, I mean, and, and eventually you will. Every game that I had that I have on this list, I've played multiple times. Two of which I own. Um, and a third, I probably am going to go own. I owned it a couple times, got rid of it, don't have it. But um, so like one, like you mentioned, um, kind of like there's like sometimes there's games where just the mechanics of the game are just something you really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And so I don't play a lot of first person shooters, but there's two when I think about, uh, well, not two. There's one when I think about story, and I can kind of say that for the other game with story, but from a mechanical, just the gameplay mechanic loop. There is a shooter developed by, I think it's developed by Gearbox. Now, I'm not, I don't really, I'm not big into Borderlands, but they did a game called Bulletstorm. And okay. this, this is a sub 10 hour shooter. It's like, it got a story. The story is ridiculous. It's stupid. But the shooting <laughs> and, the, and the mechanics you have with the shooting is freaking, it's, it's just awesome. The, the mechanics of it is just something that, that works. I get it. And it, it just, it just, scratches an itch for me and i'm like okay this is just something that i'll i work with you know what i'm saying like i enjoy yeah. running around shooting and 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 hooking and different things and like they have certain things you can use to surround it to kill people so you can like pick people into like spikes and different stuff like that and it's like just the way that whole game has to utilize the gameplay mechanics i just i just love it so i go back and return to it and i'm like hey i want to play this game where I can kind of again, it's not a it's not a hundred percent engrossing complex story. It's a dumb story, but I can go and have these super awesome firefights and really enjoy my time kicking people into spikes, kicking people in the lava pits, or shooting them or whatever stuff I got to do in that game. Uh, but it's another one that kind of scratches that. Uh, but when you talk about like The Last of Us and story, right? There's two games that really come to mind as to why I keep going back and playing them and beating them again. Uh, the first one is Sleeping Dogs, right? Sleeping Dogs is essentially Square Enix's G uh, um, um, GTA clone. I think I, I kind of mentioned before how it was like a spinoff of the true crime games, true crime streets of LA, true crime streets of yeah. New York, right? Um, so, but I love the story of it. I, I love that you're, you know, you're the undercover detective and you're trying to, you know, uh, infiltrate the triads and the whole story of it and the way it covers the complexity of being an over, undercover and developing, you know, relationships with criminals, right? Certified killers, but you have this complex relationship and the thing of that. The other game that does that, that kind of fits both in regards to mechanics and story that I keep going back and playing is Titanfall 2, right? It's a six, oh, so good. six and a half, seven hour game, but the story is told so exceptionally and you put that along with some of the best, um, first person shooting gameplay that that's yeah. you know been made and it's like how can i not go back and play this i think i've played and beat that game five five four or five times and i think i've played sleeping dogs maybe like or beat that maybe like six times um yeah you have these games that kind of scratch an itch or they scratch a story a certain way and you're like i love this story i can watch and play through the story over and over and over again you yeah know? it's like you bring up titanfall 2 like we know obviously like i was addicted to the multiplayer portion of it but mm -hmm. of course you know i beat the story mode for the achievements and stuff like that and even after like a while i'd be like you know what i feel like uh playing part of the story again and i'd load up the story and do the story yeah. again like it was still interesting yeah. after the first time mm -hmm. a tight i oh man i as much as i love apex like i s still wish for titanfall 3 yeah i mean there's there's a lot of times like like titanfall for me i get it game pass you have ea play so i can play titanfall 2 whenever i want but i still find myself when games go on sale because it goes on sale all the time and it's like hey you can buy titanfall 2 for three dollars i'm like man what a steal and then i'm like hey you get the game already idiot it's i do this <laughs> all these games i do the same thing where i see them somewhere on sale and i'm like man that's a steal i should buy it i have to remind myself you have it already you know what i'm saying so uh but yeah, yeah, that's another one where it's, you know, it's you're, again you're you're kind of like saying like, man, really wish Titanfall three was coming out. Just a continuation of that story in some way, shape, or form, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, maybe one day, maybe one day, maybe I one always day. hope. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, whatever it's called, I can't even. We were just talking about it earlier. Um, 
like a different company does it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a kind of like a um, not a spiritual successor, but kind of like a pow, like a power world ish take, yeah. a copyright yeah. infringement ish kind of thing. Yes, right. Well, I think Either they kind way. of. Well, they didn't really do it with Titanfall 2, but they kind of, I mean, Call of Duty kind of tried to do it with Call of Duty. Uh, yeah, Advanced that like? Warfare or whatever. In- Infinite Warfare. Infinite Warfare, yeah. They yeah. started running on the walls and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, freaking. Yeah, I, I didn't even, as much as I love Titanfall, I was like, I'm not even trying. Yeah. Nope. I like I like Titanfall. I want I want the I want the mechs. I don't want, I don't want Jon Snow. I want the mechs. Okay. Yeah. Um. So Call of Duty, you're not going to work. And it's it, and it's really funny if you know the batch story that the main the original like OG from Respawn they left the Call of Duty people. Yes, they're like we don't want to do this anymore. Let's go make our own game. And yes. then Call of Duty is like you know what? We shouldn't have let them go. Let's, let's just that, let's just steal their ideas and start running on the walls, guys. It's always interesting. That's why I tell people you should always follow the people that go off and set off to do their own thing, right? Because you have at least for me, I saw it. It was the people that were working on Medal of Honor. And they're like, this sucks. We're going to leave. We're going to go do our own thing. And I followed them. I'm like, all right, I'm going to see what these guys do. These the guys, they made Call of Duty. And I'm up there loving it with Call of Duty. And Call of Duty starts getting all jacked up. I'm like, what? And they're they're going like, you know what? We're, we're going to go do our own thing. We're going to go make. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to follow these guys. So if I follow <laughs> Duty, I'm going to follow these guys. Right? So when you follow, you get the next group of people that leave Respawn and decide to do their own thing. Make sure you follow them because they're probably going to come up with a kick-ass uh, FPS in five to seven years or something, you know. Yeah, that's just follow the trail, it's like the yeah. breadcrumbs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I just thought of it. Another game. It's been a while, but another game that I replayed a lot was Mirror's Edge. Yeah. And like, uh, there was these. I think I don't know if it was like for every level or if it was like a DLC. For certain levels, but you could be placed like there was like a top hundred or whatever for like the fastest playthrough of each level. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember exactly. Again, it's been a long time, but I can't remember if it was top 10 or top 100. I did get on one of the levels. Probably gone now, obviously, but like I I felt so good about getting that. But just the, the gameplay and the story, it was just so much fun. I after I played it a couple times, I would just put it on mute and just uh, I had the Lady Gaga's first CD on my 360, so mm-hmm. I would just turn on Lady Gaga and just play the game. <laughs> oh my god, so good! Even now, even nowadays, if I hear one of the her original songs, I just mm-hmm. see Mirror's Edge in my head. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I'm trying. To, I can't. I can't even think of that. You know, it should be a topic we do. What songs trigger memories of game, certain games for you? Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glad I thought of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This will be a record of us. So we don't forget it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you have? Uh, you have any other games? Um, not offhand. I mean, there's you know there's games that I played over and over again. You know, like Smash Brothers and F Zeros and yeah. Twisted Metals. Yeah. But, I'm yeah, trying to it's just kind of the same all over. Yeah, I'm trying to think of games if we're like they're like games that have obvious like ends. So like I could I could talk about like I go back and play the Guild 2, but the Guild 2 is a dynastic game. So the idea is that the game doesn't end, right? That you just have children and the children just keep the name and you just keep playing forever. If I had to pick another game that kind of has an end that I probably go back and play a lot, uh it's going to be specifically Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires. Uh, I still have that for my Xbox. I will go in there. I will hop in there. I will play the Empires mode where you build your empire. I'll create a custom character. I'll hop in, beat everyone, have the you know control all of China. The game would be over, and I'll be like, "All right, cool. Time to do it again. Let's take over the exact same places <laughs> and fight the exact same bosses all over again." Right? Uh. Um, because I'm a maniac that loves to imagine conquest by war in games. And that game allows you to do it. So that's another one that I would say, oh, yeah, my character was Shu Yi in this one. Well, now I'm Yi Shu. And watch me come into here, and I am going to mess up everyone. But instead of wearing red, I'm wearing burgundy. Get with it, all right? Um, that's another one. That's, a, that's another one that kind of goes with the uh, with the fable, too. 
it's a Mushu game. You ain't doing no thinking in a Mushu game. You're jumping in there, you're walking around, you're mashing X or you're mashing square, and that's all you're doing. All right. Yeah. And that's it. Even even in an Empire's mode or Empire's game, that's supposed to have more thinking and strategy. They're like, what do you want your strategy? I'm like, I want all my troops over here, and then I want just me right here. Because of my ego, I want to single handedly kill all the enemies on this map. So yeah, that's how my so good. That's my strategy. And then in the rare chances you die, you're like, what happened? And the game's like, oh, you set yourself up single handedly to go against 30,000 people. That's what happens. That's, <laughs> that's not real. No one does that. Were ever not in your favor. Not in that time. Now, they very could have easily have been because you came into this map with 100,000 troops, but you sent them all over to a place where they have no, no Mrs. Bean. So next time, give yourself maybe a few people to help you out. I'm like, no. Yeah, maybe two or three, you know? Just Do it case. all over again. I got the wrong sword. I got to upgrade my sword. I got to put fire on my sword. That'll help me. Always got to put the fire. Yeah, look, I have a fire sword. Fire sword, fire staff, something with fire on it. That'll help you out. Um, was that for your topic? You're good. Were you? Uh, I I think so. Yeah. Okay. Well, then that uh, that leads us to final thoughts. We give a final thought about anything that can be related or unrelated to the podcast episode. Who would like to give their final thought first? I can uh, give one. Oh, All yeah, right, you got go one. Ahead. Go ahead. I'll give one really what quick. Um, one thing that was leaked, the ESRB, which is the rating board for games, they let you know if a game is, you know, E for, e for everyone, good for 10 and under, mature, different things like that. They accidentally leaked that PlayStation is working on a remaster of Horizon Forbidden Dawn. How do they do that? I think I forgot how exactly it happened, but they they accidentally leaked that it's happening that that, that they're they're in development of a, of a remaster, and I think PlayStation has pretty much confirmed it. Okay. Dang. Um, we don't need it. <laughs> the game when the game first came out, it looked gorgeous. It still looks gorgeous. It's easily playable on everything else. People was people weren't asking for it. Nobody really. It's easy to access on, on, on PlayStation and PC, whatever, whatever. Nobody, nobody cares, okay? What everyone wants is a remaster of Bloodborne. And they refuse to give it to us. See, now it's all, it's all just out of spite. Bunch of jerks. It's just spiteful. That's what it is, okay? Give us Bloodborne. We don't want... We don't want Horizon Forbidden West or, for, or for, Forbidden Dawn. We got it already. And I just mentioned the other one, Forbidden West. The thing's got a freaking sequel to it that came out for your PlayStation 5. We ain't asking for that. Give us Bloodborne. That's all we're asking for. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you. Just or, give us you Bloodborne. Know, a Twisted Metal from some Sure. People. A Twisted Metal for some people. Do you think... I don't know if I've asked you this before. If, you, if they made... If they said... We're about to make a new, we're about to create a brand new Twisted Metal, and it's going to blow your dick off. But PlayStation 5 only. Do you think you would get a PlayStation 5? I would. Not yeah. a pro. I, you ain't, I'm yeah, not, not that not much not of a, a fool. Not a pro, but you would get yeah, I, I yeah. will get a PS5. I don't, yeah. GameStop, something. Yeah. 100%. I, I, hey, I, can't, I can't fault you for it. No, uh, it's, it's worth a shot, at least. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's my final thought, though. Okay. Um, my final thought is I, I grew up watching wrestling, mm -hmm. you know, who really hasn't someone's watched the match or two, at least, you know, for sure. And my favorite wrestler was, uh, Jeff Hardy. Yes. And, you know, he was the little, he was the freak, always wearing the fishnet shirt, different colored hair. Mm -hmm. He was crazy doing the swan mm -hmm. time bombs everywhere and everything. Mm -hmm. And. I just want to give like a, a shout out to him because like he was, you know, he's still different. And then I, I watched his and Matt's, uh, they had like a, well, whatever it's called biography, like a bio, like, like a bio documentary or something like documentary. that. Documentary. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They had one of those. And apparently he had like a pretty big drug problem mm. and like you never, at least as a kid, I never noticed it. Mm -hmm. You know, and he, he just put himself out there every night and 
I loved it. So I just want to, you know, I, I have a, a pop figure of him and Matt. So that's why oh, it, yeah? it was popped in my head. Yeah. So I just, you know, like shout, you know, thanks for being a, a role model, I guess. A role model in ways. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you grew up in the, you know, the, in the, the best era of wrestling, I don't know how you could not always, always rooted for them. You know, the very first thing, you know, when I was young, the very, the very first thing I was able to smell is what the rock was cooking. You know, yeah. That's, yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean that whole era was great. Both sides it was WWE, WCW. Most it's really what I was into. I wasn't really that much into ECW. Um, Same. But yeah, Hardy, the Hardy Boys, they were awesome. You know. Yeah, my my favorite match of all time. I forget what WrestleMania it was, but it was a tables, ladders, and chairs match for one of the belts. I think it was the tag team belts, and it was the Hardy Boys. Versus the Dudley Boys versus mm. Edge and Christian. Ah, okay. So good, and like yeah. uh, Jeff gets speared off by Edge. They were both on ladders. Yeah. Oh my God, he was like hanging onto the belt and stuff. It was so good, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that was great. Yeah, I remember what was it? Um, what was another one? A Mod and Bradshaw, right? Wasn't that like a tag team? Yeah, they were. They were like at the end of like the Hardy Boys and stuff. Yeah, I think I don't because I don't remember them too much, but I do know their names. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was another kind of tag team. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was good times. Good times. Agreed. That's my final thought. All righty. That brings us to the end of level 117 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you liked what you heard, please follow and subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. You can also check us out, follow, like, and share on the socials. We're on Facebook, TikTok, uh, Twitter, X. Uh, and we're also on YouTube where we upload video versions of the podcast every week. If you want to support us, there's two ways you can do that. One, buy the merch. we got a merch store, Teespring store. You can check out the link there. It's included with every post when we upload it, you know, when the, when the, when the podcast is going out. Um, shirts, hats, different kind of merch there. You can check us out. Also, we have a Patreon. If you want to support us, you want to up that support we have three tiers a two dollar a five dollar and a seven dollar tier each of them offering little bits of goodies on exclusive content as well as content that gets released before it goes out on either youtube or another podcast service um that is it for me david was there anything else you want to add Please. all right well thanks for tuning in and we will catch you on the next level <laughs>